Hi, I'm Rob Cosman. We are here in Niagara Falls, Ontario, Canada. We're at a place called Heartland Forest, which is what we rent twice a year to host our hand tool workshop classes where we host disabled veterans. So what you see behind me is our backdrop. We use this when we go to wood shows. We also use it here. This was our class in April of 2017. We've named our, our uh, cause the Purple Heart Project, hence the PHP. This is actually the shape of the U.S. Metal, uh, Purple Heart Medal. And then you see the dovetails, and there's a bit of bird's eye maple on this side, and purple heartwood on this side. And of course, a hand plane. That was designed by our trusty Colonel Luther. Anyway, so these are some of the guys that were in the class last time. Now I'm going to take you around, show you a little bit about our facility and what we do. Um, this is the front of the class. <coughs> Over here is my hand tool cabinet that I made specifically for this class. And if you haven't seen this before, we uh, the entire build was in our online workshop under the hand tool projects. So everything in this was built entirely with hand tools. Uh, houses all of our tools neatly. There's a few of them that are out on the floor. The guys can borrow them if they need to. These are our drawers, screws, all the dovetail tools. So I keep all my sharpening stuff and I haven't finished that one yet. In here we keep our shooting board and our bench hook. In here are where we store the legs or the feet that this rides on. This whole thing collapses and fits in there. This is the door that actually also acts as my whiteboard. We just have to build a stand for it. Work in progress. And the other door is over here. This door turns into a saw bench where we can cut our wood down. So what the guys are working on right now, they're at the beginning class, so they've spent one day dimensioning lumber and that some of that lumber will then be used to cut dovetails and we're going to make a bench hook. This is something that would go on your bench. Front cleat would catch the edge of your bench like that. There'd be another cleat here and you would use it to saw pieces and that prevents the saw from hitting your bench. Instead it lands on the bench hook. Alright, let's make our way around. Here's our uh, great facility by the way. Uh, I only wish the lighting was a little bit better, but as far as it's nice and airy, we've got access to the outdoors. We have windows that open in the summer when we need them. It's rather cool right now. Here's where we keep our spare tools. These are winding sticks that we use to help determine if a piece of wood is flat. As we process it by hand, you put one on the front, one on the back, and then you simply sight down the two top edges to see if they're parallel. And if they're not, we show you how to fix it. These are scrub planes. This is an old tool, but it is designed to remove a lot of wood quickly. That's why it has a big thick blade that is convex, or convex, yes, on the end of the big open throat so you can remove a lot, of, a lot of wood quickly. So let's turn around and have a quick look this way. We have, how many benches do we have here? 14? I think we have four, 14 benches. So the chairs are in a semicircle, so whenever we do demonstrations, they're always at this bench. Everybody sits in there so they can see as good as possible. And then they go back to their bench to work. If you look over here on the wall, we've had some late additions. We have our, our uh, fireplace, which is on a TV screen, but it's calming. And then, let's start actually on this side, Jake. <clears throat> now, we have to maintain our business while we're gone. We're involved in this for about two and a half weeks, every November and every April. So we bring all of our inventory up. And Jake maintains, maintains their orders. That's why the computer's there. Pardon the hockey equipment, but that's how we stress relieve. So we play hockey late at night after the workshop's over, and that's our gear drying. Peter from New Brunswick. Hi, Rob. Say hi to the camera. Hi, camera. You having fun? I am. Learn anything? Yes, patience. <laughs> <laughs> Peter's in the process of cutting dovetails. So Monday is sharpening, Tuesday is, is hand planes, Wednesday is dimensioning lumber. How was that? What, what did you learn about the process of turning a rough piece of wood into something flat, smooth, and square on six sides? Actually, how precise a sharp blade can be. Right. So do you think you'd be a better power tool worker as a result of what you learned? Oh, absolutely. Good. Keep at it. We'll come back around and see how you do. show you a couple of our new finds. We just picked up a distributorship for PEC tools. 
It's a company in California that makes squares and uh, combination squares and dividers. It's been fantastic because we've, we've been missing that part. We have a new line of chisels in from Wood River that I helped them with. These are all of our saws. We stock five different saws now. Mallets, sharpening gear. Now we're going to stop in and say hi to A.A. Ron. How you doing? Good. Working on dovetail? Working on dovetails. Yeah? How's it going? It's going good. Been a little struggle. Yeah? Why? One, well, sometimes. How many have you done before? None other than the first one I did just a minute ago. Okay. But, uh, Can you show that to us? Yeah. All right. So it has to be planed and it'll actually look a lot better. This isn't glued? No, it's not glued. I All right. So I put them to work gluing it. So we're going to come back and look at your second one. Okay. That's, a, that's a decent first attempt. Overall opinion, opinion of the class? You've been here for four days? It's great. I would come back. You come back? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Just for this class again. And Aaron is a vet. What division? What, tell us. I was in the Army. Where, where did you serve? I served in Iraq. And your job was? Uh, route clearance. And that could be exciting at times? It could be exciting at times, yes. It was uh, interesting and definitely exciting as a word I would describe. All right, we appreciate your service. Thank you. Thank you. Keep at it. We make our way through here. Pardon? Ten minutes? David. Yes. How are you doing? Good. And, uh, Have you mastered dovetails yet? I've got a lot of sign in. <laughs> I'm so, to... so I told you early in the week that any time you had a break, saw. Yes. You can't get enough sawing practice. Do you believe me now? I believe you now. Do you see the value of it? <laughs> Roger. Where'd you serve? Uh, in Afghanistan and Iraq. Yeah, in the Army? Army no. and Navy. Army and Navy. Army and Navy. All right. Couldn't decide. You couldn't decide? <laughs> Has this been worth it? Oh, yes. It's, it's not even Friday. Yes, no. I wish it was Monday again. Yeah, I know it goes fast. Yes. Keep at it. Thank you. Alan. Wow. You're not quite the senior man here. No, not quite. What do you think? What do I think? Is it worth it? Uh, yes, it's worth it. I, so talk, talk to the camera, and, and if somebody wants to improve their woodworking skills, hand to woodworking skills, what's your guess? Come here for five days, how much of a benefit is it going to be? Come here for five days if you haven't done it before, or if you have and you need to improve your skills. There's, there's nothing that beats the hands-on, face-to-face, and the individual instruction to be able to improve your skills. Uh, I came in here with no skills. I'm working on leaving with some skills, uh, but I, I've... I learned how to, how to set up my tools, how to sharpen my tools, how to use my tools uh, in the process of making the dovetails correctly and precisely. Single most important skill you've learned? The patience and, and to build confidence. But Single most important skill you've skill. learned? Um, it should have been on Monday. Sharpening. Sharpening, sharpening thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Sharpening is the key to the whole entire hand tool process. Yeah. And have you got it now? Yeah, I do. Good. Keep it up. Thank you. So, we've got a whole lot more people. Maybe we'll do another one of these. Uh, I would encourage you to take a look at what we're doing. Our Purple Heart Project is designed to give some relief particularly to soldiers who suffer from post-traumatic stress disorder. It uh, occupies the mind 100% when you're doing this, and you're cutting dovetails like this, you can't be thinking about anything else. It gives these guys a chance to get away from an area they don't want to be. We send these, each of these soldiers go home with about $2,000 worth of tools so they can continue to do this at home. They can set up a little shop in their spare bedroom. It's, it's that compact. And uh, they're going to have the tools that allow them to build just about any piece of household furniture. There may be some other things that they're going to need down the road, but this is certainly a foundation set. One more guy I want you to meet. <clears throat> Hardest worker of the bunch. Jeremy. Yes. Say hello. Hi. Jeremy. Where'd you serve? Uh, army. Where? Afghanistan. With some Canadians? Yeah, my uh... God save the Queen. <laughs> <laughs> so
So you've been here for four days. What do you think? I love it. Yeah? Yes, I want to come back. Nothing, nothing slows him down and nothing gets in his way. I come over here the other day and he's up here and, and he, had a, he had an accident where he lost uh, both, both legs above the knee. I come over here and he's up on top of his bench planing and it was the best way in order to get some weight behind the plane. Whatever works. And that's, a, that's what I really enjoy about him. He fig there's, there, are no, there are no obstacles. There's just new ways to be discovered. Did a great job. I expect he'll probably have one of the best dovetails in the class. Thanks, Jeremy. One more. One more. Jim, can I interrupt you for a minute? I know, I know you're busy. Can you say hello? Hello. Do you mind telling people how young you are? I'm 87. Uh, and, uh, so can age ever be an excuse for not doing something I like this? I, I guess not. I thought it might be. But, you know. Drove up here from Pittsburgh. Yeah. Uh, Jim is a retired physician. And he's, we work from 8 in the morning to late at night. And I haven't found him sleeping under his bench. So he's been right at it with everybody else. Can you handle it? I think so. Yeah, sure. I think so too. So far, I got one more day to go. One more day to go. <laughs> we should do this interview tomorrow. <laughs> Tell them number one skill you've learned. Skill, I think. Number one. Yeah, talking to these guys, I think is the number one thing for me here. As far as skills uh, on the workbench, uh, I'm learning the dovetails, but I'm not there yet. <coughs> What do you think was the most important skill you've learned that enabled you to do sharpening? Sharpening. Good. That's what I was hoping you'd say. I knew you didn't hear me because I asked somebody on the other side of the room earlier. Thanks, Jim. <clears throat> Keep at it. We'll be back to see. Check in with us again. We'll, we'll do another one of these maybe tomorrow as kind of a wrap-up of the entire week. You can go visit us at robsworkshop.com. In fact, if you are a wounded veteran yourself, if you go to robsworkshop.com in the top toolbar, <clears throat> you'll see vets. You click on that, and we give you a full uh, lifetime membership to our online workshop. Normally, it's $400 a year, but for our disabled veterans, it is free. It'll give you access to in excess of currently 1,700 episodes that have already been shot. Plus, we film five episodes a week, 52 weeks a year, except for these last two weeks. We've been up here busy. But if, you don't, if you're not a veteran, would you please spread the word to any disabled veteran that you know? We appreciate your support. We thank these guys for what they've done, and this is an opportunity for the average person to reach out and help as well. Thank you.